what's odd about post-traumatic is it's usually onset <coughs> much later. You know, you might have seemingly be fine, and then you know, two or three months later, you start to feel these these symptoms. Uh, I guess uh, you know, it's just uh, depends on the individual. It's how long it sticks with you, and then it, it, it still does. But you know, and that wasn't long after that Columbine thing. So I was kind of you know, those first couple of weeks, I'm like, well, be my luck to come down here with the, you know, packing bus kick in my door one of these days, but it didn't, didn't happen. There's also another one talked about in your book called perpetration-induced trauma or stress. Do I know what that is? Perpetration-induced trauma stress. P-I-T-S. It's the pits. That comes from soldiers who have killed people in combat. They're trained to do a lot of things, but they're not really trained. Uh, you know, we have follow-up for combat trauma, grief, you know, about one of my buddies got killed, survivor's guilt, a lot of times they'll have that. You know, why did he die and I didn't? You know, say one of those car bombs blows up and you know, you'd been the commander and you just said, uh, you said over there, I'll sit here. And then over there got blown up and killed and over <coughs> here you survive. You feel guilty about it. Uh, fear, all those things. But they don't really deal with the stress of having to kill somebody. And uh, so that that's a, one that, that can happen. Perpetration induced traumatic stress. We get a chance for the end of the year. I've got a, a video on uh, the. Uh, it's called Survivor Day. It's about some troops, uh, people coming back from Iraq. It was they got hit and injured over there, and they call it Alive Day, the day that you got hit but didn't die. They kind of celebrate it like a second birthday. And some one of the guys in there has a, has a post-traumatic stress, and it sounds like it was perpetration induced. He talks about. Killing a kid, I think, at one point. Uh, you know, you can imagine how that would. You know, you're on patrol. Maybe there's been some shots fired at you and and your guys as you're walking down the street. So you know there's hostile people in the area, and so you just react. You see somebody rushes to the window up in that building. You see a figure move up there. What are you gonna do? You're gonna shoot first and ask questions later. Well, what if you, after you've shot, you realize it was just a child coming to the window to look and see what was going on out there? You know, you've just been shot at five minutes earlier by somebody, and now you, you know, that would be a tough one to deal with. I think that's kind of sort of what happened to that guy. He doesn't go into detail talking about what happened, but you can imagine how that would, would be. So that's the perpetration induced stress. Um, victims, as we said, typically become distracted. Disorganized, they'll have memory difficulties. Uh, they have psychic numbing to everyday events. They call that diminished hedonic capacity. It's on the board there. Um, so you know, it could be real long-term psychological impacts there, and it can last. Uh, they estimate your book says about 15% of the people coming back from the Middle East are soldiers suffering from it. I've heard other estimates that put it as high as one-third. Uh, they said in the Vietnam era it was more like uh, 30 percent, so uh, we do recognize it more and, and at least our, our people suffering from it probably have more uh, help and counseling and treatment available than we did for, you know, the Vietnam and World War II era uh, soldiers, but it, it's still uh, difficult to uh, deal with. It says some of the worst symptoms uh, come with uh, seeking treatment even after returning home. Uh, they, you know, it's uh, a lot of soldiers. You know, you're taught to be tough in the military, and so some view it as a sign of weakness if they have to go and ask for help and say, you know, I'm, I'm having nightmares. I'm, I can't concentrate on things. So uh, that's a tough one to, for the military people. All right, let's look at the physical response to stress. And I'm going to switch gears because I uh, broke this one down. 